Well, let's start with Denny, maybe. Where is where is that situation at with her? Yeah, so obviously that's you know, pretty topical. Um, it's challenging because we're dealing with people's personal medical situation, so that's uh, that's always an interesting one. But ultimately, um, you know, we just sort of deal with it as and when we, we will need to. Currently there's a regulation in place in from the AFL's perspective which says November the 19th. Um, Denny's currently working through her situation. She's ga gathering as much information as she possibly can and we're supportive of that. We want her to get as much information as she can. Ultimately, uh, it's her decision and we'll respect that decision. From a club's perspective, we've been really clear. Uh, we're, we're very much promoting everyone to get vaccinated um, and personally that's clearly my position as well. Um, vaccinated and you know I think it's important for us as a community, it's part of how we're managing this whole situation and as an industry it's really critical because our, our business is around bringing people together so um, that's challenging when, when the regulations say that we can't. So the club's position is really clear, the AFL's position is really clear. Uh, my position's pretty clear on it as well, um, but ultimately um, it's an individual decision and it's someone's medical decision, so um, from that perspect, respect, we do respect her, her right to get more information, as much information as she possibly can, and, and if and when we have to cross that bridge, then, then we'll do so. Has she, has she given you a timeline or something as to when she'll make a decision? Ultimately the timeline is up to her and, uh, and it doesn't really matter, you know, we're getting on with business, um, we've clearly got a date there in terms of November 19th, whereby um, where you know push push may come to shove, but then again it might not. So ultimately, we're not too concerned about that. Um, we'll work to that timeline, and we'll we'll make the decision when when we have to. Other than Denny, uh, most of the other players, as far as you're aware, I know it's a private medical stuff, but are all the other players on board? You think yeah, at this point, um, the information we have uh, is that. Uh, the remain you know, all of our playing squad, uh, bar one, are either vac fully vaccinated, partially vaccinated, or in the process of, uh, and therefore, yeah, it's 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 something that we're dealing with as a society. Just those slight variances within that, but once again, if we go back to the overarching position, we're we're pretty much um, promoting as many people as we can to to get vaccinated because it, it helps our industry and helps our community. Is it the majority of the players who are fully vaxxed or...? I actually don't have that don't. number, no. How is Denny handling Yeah, well, she's well. She's tra come to train and she's training super hard. She's, uh, she's you know, great energy and so forth. But obviously uh, it's a really emotive issue across across the community and, um, and so she's having to deal with that. But from a, play from a training perspective, um, fronting up, doing all the work and doing everything we could ask of her. Are you sort of planning like she, she will be part of the team? Basically we're just getting on with business uh, and ultimately you know there's plenty of lead time. What I know is that whatever happens um, on this front or any front, um, this group is really resilient, this group is good at, uh, at focusing on task and getting on with task and I'm really confident that we'll be able to um, do exactly that. Is it right that she's been meeting with some AFL vaccine experts? Is that how she's educating herself? That's my understanding, yeah. There's, the AFL providing great information, um, our medical team providing great information, uh, and ultimately, yeah, that's, that's the situation. Do you know what her concern is? I do not. How's um, everything else going, Matty? Obviously, pre-season isn't pretty... Yeah, so it's, uh, it's great. It's, it's really exciting. Uh, we've had our season pushed back a little bit, so we were planning to be playing games in December. That's now January 6th, uh, which initially was a little bit uh, annoying because we wanted to get going, but uh, ultimately it's been pretty good for us because uh, we had a number of players that had some off-season surgery, and so nearly all of those are now reintegrated back into the group, and we're going to get a really solid training block uh, with with the you know with a, with a healthy squad so uh, that's really exciting um, clearly you know as we've seen each year the standard just keeps getting better and better and we're seeing that on the training track as well so you're only comparing yourself with yourself but um, I'm sure all the other teams are saying exactly the same thing but from our perspective we feel as though uh, the standard of the players is improving and our understanding of the game is improving so therefore uh, the product should be getting better and better and and, and I mean last year Competition was really even. Six teams finished within a game, um, and the final series was, you know, closely fought. Uh, so I'd suggest that it's going to be, you know, more of the same. It's going to be a great season. Um, in terms of a leadership group, I think you're not too far away from, from doing that. 
Yeah, that'll be over in the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, and um, that's probably a little bit earlier than we have done it historically, but probably because our, uh, our time frames were based on December start. And so we'll, we'll have a little bit more lead than other seasons. But yeah, that'll get resolved over, over the next fortnight. Going on a pre-season camp next week, have I got that right? We're going to have some team dynamics days. Yes, yeah, that'll be great. That'd be really good. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, well, I'm planning it as we speak. So if you've got any good ideas, I'm, uh, I'm all ears. No, we'll just basically, uh, they're trained, what they have done, they've trained their house down already. And so it's probably it'll be just a good time to do something a bit different that won't be footy specific, but it'll just be an opportunity to come together, connect and, uh, and you know, probably explore some of those uh, teamwork, um, teamwork, what's the word for it? Skill sessions, yeah. No, there's actually skills. Skills involved in coming together as a team, connection that are that are not related specifically to football. So we'll probably put the footies away for a little while, but um, do some activities that are hopefully a bit of fun as well. You get a trial game in. Okay. Yeah, well, that's the intent. Um, so as I said, January straight after Christmas is we're into games. Um, so we're hopeful that in the week, in the final week of uh, pre-Christmas training, that we'll be able to get a trial game of some shape or form. It'll probably be somewhat dependent on the border situation. Obviously, um, you know, we don't have a, a, a cross-town rival yet, so uh, we'll look forward to that day. But uh, until then, we'll play someone from interstate, but it'll depend on us getting them in and out of the, of the state. Some of those um, players who've had off-season surgery, Erin, obviously yeah. quite high profile. How's she going? No, she's going game? really well. So um, she's, uh, I was, Talking to Harps today, actually said she's done more running than she normally does, <laughs> which is true. She's covering a lot of ground. Uh, her program is obviously tailored towards an athlete who's 35, 36, however old she is. Uh, but she'll have basically a she's had a, a quite a good conditioning block at the moment, and probably about a five to six week lead of, of really high intensity footy leading into the season. But she probably doesn't need a 10 week lead because uh, that's not the best thing for her. And Hatcher. Yeah, similarly, yeah. So she had a little uh, elbow uh, operation in the off-season, but once again, she's one of, this, as I said, there's probably about six that are in that category, whereby uh, the, the extra month is going to help them because they'll have a month of training that they wouldn't have otherwise had. How about your new recruits? How are they fitting in? Yeah, it's been great. Obviously exciting for the group to get some new talent into the into the place. And um, so the young younger players who are still completing year 12, uh, so they're not here with us every session. They're only only allowed to come and train two sessions a week until they finish their exams, which will be in the next week or so. So Brooke Tonnen um, is really skillful halfback from uh, Glenelg. Zoe Prowse has played ruck, uh, key forward, key back and uh, midfield, so we're not sure where she'll end up, but really athletically talented, clearly, and uh, comes from Sturt. Uh, and then Abby Ballard is from West Adelaide. Um, she's a year older, but uh, really good ball user, left foot penetrating uh, kick and really clean at ground level. And then we've got two Jazzers. So Jazz Hewitt returns to the club from uh, via Gold Coast, played ruck predominantly, but might also play some key forward or key back. And then Jazz Simmons is our basketball recruit um, who's had three years in US college system. And, uh, and played a game of footy at uh, Mildura and we thought that would be good enough. So <laughs> she's once again athletic talent and, uh, and learning, relearning the game. Played about seven years ago and, uh, and uh, she's, got some, she's got some upside. Do you see her in the rough? I think she'll play more, uh, she's, she is tall, uh, but I think she'll probably play more running positions, more outside running positions. Yeah, she's elite speed and um, yeah, she covers the ground pretty well. Footy, footy, footy. Oh, yeah. <laughs>